the ones and twos hosting tonight. Uh, a pretty decent week for me. Not terrible. Can't complain. Uh, but I do love hosting this podcast. It's always a good time. Whip around with the lads. Uh, and let's uh, let's go ahead and check in. Nikki, how are we doing this week, brother? Uh, you know, um, it could have been a lot worse. Um, I got to watch both of uh, the teams that I support this weekend in California. So even though they were both draws, really couldn't damper my spirits too much. So um, can't complain at all. Um, but I'm happy to talk about some of the other games that happened over the weekend and some future games that are coming. Um, but yeah, you can follow me on or find me on Twitter at Hafey4 as usual, but pumped to talk about it, boys. I'll, I'll correct you really quick. One draw, one loss for your two teams, but your mind was on golf, brother. So I, <laughs> I completely understand. I would not have been paying attention. No, uh, I paid attention to that. That was just a uh, <laughs> slip of the tongue. That's, you know? that's all right. We're doing it live here, folks. This is, you get what you get every year. We don't come in here and edit anything. So, uh, Doves, what's up down there, my man? How are we doing? Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, kind of the same, kind of the same as Nikki. I think every single team um, in all sports that I support lost this weekend. The Cardinals were horrible. The Battle Hawks lost on a sixty-four yard field goal. Man United was terrible. City was terrible. Um, but there was positive. DJ Burns uh, helped my bank account this weekend, so I, I am up a little bit there. Um, but happy to dive in. Obviously, some some good fixtures to cover. Um, the most boring fixture of all time yesterday to cover. Um, but ha- happy to dive in. Um, I have some. I don't think I have quite a rant like I typically do, but I have things to get off my chest this week for sure. I'm so happy to be here, fellas. I'm happy to have you for sure. And I'm just now noticing that my English team was the only one of everyone on this current podcast to actually take three points this weekend. So <laughs> Blind squirrel finds a nut, brother. Blind squirrel, Blind squirrel, squirrel finds, finds a nut. You nut. take the wins when you get them, boys. Hen, what's going on over there? Uh, what's up, fellas? It's a, it's a great week to be on the Arsenal Vision podcast. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. It's, you know. April Fools. We got to throw something out there uh, early on. Um, early on, a couple months ago, I thought this was going to be the episode hosted by the wags of the Mecca of Banter. Uh, but alas, we're all here uh, on April Fools hosting like normal. Um, it's great to be here. It's a great week to be a Manchester United fan because we have two opportunities to get it right this week. Uh, let the past be the past, Griff. Let the past be the past. We're only as good as our next game. Um, I'm excited to talk and excited to talk St. Louis City as well. Glad to have you. Uh, as always, we, we love checking in on the City Boys. Uh, not a great week this week, but we'll get there. And certainly, last but not least, our Arsenal representation for the evening, the man himself, Nate Griff. How are we doing, big man? I'm glad Winks let me slide in for a week here. I'm I'm excited to discuss what was an incredibly tactical, exciting game. So Jesus. I'm ready to get into it. I mean, I got notes. I learned so much this past weekend. I can't wait to get into it, man. We're glad to have you here. He is just a tad delayed as he is on his phone app because of his old uh, MacBook, apparently, is what I've heard. Um, but you know what? We actually just lost him, folks. <laughs> We're doing it live, boys. We're doing it live. We told you we don't edit a thing. Hopefully he gets back in here. <laughs> we won't talk about Arsenal till later because we do have to start with the local lads. St. Louis went to Real Salt Lake this weekend, uh, and we finished 3-1 to RSL. Yeah, not, a tie. not a tie. Not a tie. Definitely not a tie. Um, <laughs> it, it was, uh, you know, and I hate to sound like a broken record, boys, but it was a disappointing watch. Yeah. We're not getting anything. We're not getting anything to look forward to. I respect all the all the other accounts and, and, and talking heads that really, you know, gear up and they have so much excitement and, you know, there's a lot of hope going forward. I'm just not one of those guys at the moment. Um, we, you know, Indy started us off really strong goal from where, lads? Where? Where did he score this goal from? With, With baby. The wing. With. Wow. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, a class Incredible goal finish. from Indy too. Incredible finish. Um, he's one of my guys. You know, Henry mentioned to us talking some. You know, we'll we'll throw in a, a a section maybe in the future. But whose stock is rising and whose whose is lowering? And I my stock on Indy is just is just going straight up right now. So um, that was about it. 
frankly. They're, yeah. uh, he scored a great goal in the second minute. I met Tam Av, per usual, going nuts with my friends. Like, that was real soccer right there. But you know what? All good things must come to an end. That was really the last highlight uh, in, in my point of view. I'll let you guys kind of hop in. I do have some notes here, but I don't need to run this one. Yeah, I, I think the goal was great. Um, I also just like a little shout out. I don't, you know, obviously when we're at the games, I don't get to watch uh, with commentary. But in all of the away games we've had, this was the most complimentary the announcers have been to us ever. I mean, it felt like they didn't really talk about RSL hardly at all throughout the game. It was just really focused on St. Louis City and how we built a culture, built a team, built an identity, all that stuff. Um, but unfortunately... Um, that was pretty much like the only compliments they could really pay. I mean, Indy's goal was awesome. Um, a double scissors cut inside and then bang it far post. Great goal. And then we just stuck to the game plan through the first first half. I mean, you go into the half at 1-0 up. That, that's awesome on the road. There wasn't anything like notable. Um, I think Dobes, you put it in our chat saying like, okay, now that we got one, we can't sit back. We can't yep. play defensive. And that's, of course, what we did. Um, as we move into the second half, uh, that the guy, number nine, Chicho from RSL, um, he's a vet, he's, he's a wily vet, you know, he's been there, done that in the MLS and he's a huge wank, Nick. Uh, like you said, he's a huge wank (laughs) and, um, you know, you can't punch a guy, um, and then stand away with it it and point in his face and then just the call. Yeah, like, so, I mean, we finally get the refs back, uh, and you expect things to go better, and they just don't. Um, that Maybe the MLS is doomed when it comes to comes to that, but, you know, you go down the first goal, it's unfortunate, you're still playing for a tie. The second goal, it's never a handball. Um, yes, it hits his hand, but it's off his knee first, that's bullshit. And then the third goal, it's like the team just stopped playing, man. Like, I mean... It really was just more and more disappointing the more you watched in the game. Um, I still don't know if I've like emotionally recovered from the game, to be honest with you. Like, it's just, I, I woke up Sunday morning just feeling depressed uh, from the game the night before. It's just not a whole lot redeeming. Um, and yeah, the, some guys' stocks are up and a lot of guys' stocks are down right now. And there's worries. I think there's legitimate worries that we didn't really see until the middle of the summer last year. But there's legitimate worries right now uh, in our team. The, uh, I think when the lineup came out, I know we did like sort of a, I think who's who, Hen and I last week that we, we talked about. Like when the lineup came out, I was kind of here for it. I mean, there wasn't, with with injuries, like there wasn't too much that I think I personally probably would have changed. Like I, I was happy seeing one striker and, and for the first half it kind of worked. But I think when you, and, and I, I truthfully don't even think, obviously the red card is sort of a, a big turning point in this game. He probably should have been sent off, scores three goals. To me, that's not really, like, it is a factor. But at the same time, like, we didn't exactly play well enough to, like, go tie the game or get three points anyway. And I think that's a bigger concerning point than trying to blame something on the shitty refs that are shitty refs and are going to continue to be. 100%. We didn't really show too much to me that was like, hey, we're going to get back into this game. And like, yes, you're up one nothing. Obviously, you know, RSL is down one nothing at home. They're going to come back out. you kind of come at you. But there was just so much inconsistency from nobody in the, the midfield could really get a hold of a game. I know Texan with Hoove. Hoove has some, uh, you know, sort of opinions on AZ where he's a little bit too frantic and he kind of doesn't keep control of the ball. And that's just exactly what he is. And you have Blom, who's sort of good at breaking up play. Durkin's the same way. But none of them were great at like putting their foot on the ball and slowing the game down and actually letting us keep the ball for a second and try to build something. And then it was once RSL scored a goal, it was only a matter of time until they they, they got another one. At least it seemed that way in my eyes. Like obviously, yeah, and like you said, really like, shifted. yeah, Yarrow and, and Vasilev were probably the two the two bright spots from the game. And there wasn't a whole other lot like or a whole other you know anything than that. I'm just looking at the lineup here. I'm looking at the FOP mob. It's like nobody besides those two had above a 6.7. It's bad. And I, just, I know that those things, the the those scores aren't necessarily everything when it comes to watching a game, but I think this is pretty spot on in terms of who had good games and who did. Yeah, that was the only person I was going to say that I didn't hear before was, I know we talk about him a lot on this podcast. We could be a little bit biased, but I truly think he put in a great performance was Josh Yarrow. Um, I think every time he starts and puts in a 90, he gives his – 
110% effort every single time, which is something that I don't think happens every time. I will also just continue to say, I think our center back partnership needs more time together. Like I, I still think some of the switching of players and like, even with the defensive mids, like on that turnaround goal, like, was that Josh's man? Was that Blom's man? Yeah. Who's stepping there? Yeah, like, for those sure. conversations need to be had. And I feel like that only comes with more time and chemistry um, in that defensive pair partnerships. So I hoping that we can find some consistency there um, moving forward, but I don't think we're, that all that well. I, I'm with you. We're running out of time on figuring I out who needs to be all. there. No, I you know. And, and and you're not wrong. It, it's it doesn't help having one center back hurt every week. But even then, it's like you know the end of last year didn't show exactly that Nilsson and and Parker were it. Um, you know Josh and I think Timmy's play a lot of the same position and and maybe you know too right similarly sides. at times. Yeah, yeah. you know. It, we don't have another left sided center back that we're that you know we're willing to trust. I don't think Wenzel yet. So, um, you, you know, I agree. Hopefully, we can't catch a break with injuries, but this isn't down to that by any means. Um, Az thirty three games in his MLS career, one goal, four assists. That that's my first stat, and <laughs> it's just like it's it's. Albert Einstein definition of insanity doing it over and over and over again and expecting the same result like there's a little bit of that for me like I you see what he can bring and he's still so young no one's gonna slate the guy I think he's been great for you know what he's been asked to do but now we're talking about results now we're talking about output now we're talking about if you're gonna be that attacking midfielder inverted whatever you want to call him from the wing like we're gonna need to start seeing some production um, that, that's a huge bummer, you know, and nothing is, uh, this isn't on Berkey by any means, but Berkey hasn't saved a penalty since 2016. He's faced yeah. 20 plus like that's, uh, yeah. I guess we knew that when we were getting him, it's not like he's this unbelievable touted penalty saver, but dude, he doesn't get close ever. I, I it's yeah. just so disheartening knowing I, I've seen this, this Arango guy step up. I just knew he was going to score. There wasn't even like a, there wasn't even like a, a glimmer of hope for me. I was like, this is going in the net. Um, and yeah, back to Josh. You know, he's two weeks back to back off of off of taking on some absolute stud nines, and he's performed admirably. He was um, our best player by, by our long, best yeah, player by a long shot. And, and there's a consistency issue, maybe if if we're gonna really get nitty gritty, but like. We can't have him be the best player. We we didn't sign him from Sweden as an international to come be a DP center back. We didn't get him from another MLS team with years and years and years of experience and, and journeyman type role. Like he was he's not supposed to be that guy. And that's no slate against him at all because he ha he's really showing that he deserves to be here. But you we just need some more guys to step up. Um, you know, not being able to get back into it. We had two shots on goal. Like, yeah, there's not, there's nothing not. there. Um, so you know, do we hang this one on Carnell? No, I it was the first time we mentioned him in this whole segment so far. Um, I thought he got the lineup right. You know, but but, but, but when... I'm I'm like, I mean, maybe we haven't said his name, but like, and maybe it's just because you know, I. I'm well versed in watching teams without identities, but like I, I, I think at some point it, it's just yeah, the the A Z thing continuously choosing him. I think even even when you look at like what is the game plan? I, when you look at RSL, they did this in the first time they played us too, by the way. We they they played three guys high um against us. And all the time when when they broke out um, they had three guys against three typically, or three guys against four, and we couldn't deal with it. If you want the game plan of how to attack against St. Louis City, do that. Like we throw our wing backs high, and we're out of position, and we throw men forward, and then if you can break quickly, that's what you have. But, and I know that that's kind of a little bit of of how maybe he wants to play, and that's that like Red Bulls mentality that you know he came from in his coaching history. But like, in in a different way you brought up Carnell, which is like the expecting you like doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Like that's what he's doing. You know, like there, there's no change. There's no difference in the expectation that we're placing on these guys or 
maybe even the consequence is a better term of like doing the same thing over and over and your spot isn't up for grabs. Like and who knows, man, maybe Leuven comes back healthy and it changes everything and it changed that rotation. But like you lose hope that even that's going to happen, especially after last year when he had the same issue where he was out and then he came back and was significantly worse. So I don't know, like running out of time might be the fucking title of this podcast uh, episode, because like, I feel like that's just what it is right now with St. Louis city and uh, one loss into the season. Maybe, maybe we're not freaking out too much or maybe we're freaking out the right amount. It's just like, there, there's just not a whole lot redeeming. Um, I was able to watch quite a few MLS games like this weekend and last weekend as well. When you look at some of these other guys, especially when you look at their DPs, they're dangerous, man, at any given time, especially attacking DPs. They can make it happen. They get one chance, and it is that is the thing. With us, you just don't see that. You see, like, consistently missing chances or consistently, like, not converting on a half chance. It's um, it's looking well, grim right now. I don't even think it's converting chances. We don't even have clear-cut chances. Like, the only thing that's generated from our offense is an individual moment of brilliance like Indy's goal or Big Sam. Being being his size, using his pace and bodying somebody. And how many times, I mean, like, how many times have we said on this podcast that the midfield three is the most important piece of the entire game? No matter if you're a defender, no matter if you're a forward, if your midfield three aren't clicking, you're not going to be able to create chances. And we don't have, Henry, much to your point, we don't have a number 10 that we can rely on week in and week out to not only just keep possession, but create. Like we have nobody that has has stepped up and said, I'm going to be the 10 and I'm going to create for us. AZ has done it in spurts, but not consistently. Lewin, we heard last year, who wants to play an eight. But who's going to be that 10 to create? Like you you can have a, a Blom or a Durkin or a Kojima or these guys that can play as your holding mids, but there's no connections with your front three if you don't have that person in front of them that can play somebody in. And I've been sitting here just looking at it. It's like, why not try Indy as the 10? Like once Alm gets healthy or try Alm. That's what I thought was going to happen this week. Like I I, thought that Indy was going to slide in there and then Alm was going to go play where Indy was playing. That's what I thought was going to happen. Is the biggest concern is that you can go and you can lose on the road to RSL three to one. Like that can happen. Or you can lose to these teams that have quality. But the biggest concern is that we're not creating chances. Everything that we're expecting to happen is coming out of a long ball forward, expecting somebody to either outpace them or it's coming from a set piece. And you can't consistently expect to win games if you continue to do that week in and week out. So part of it is probably on Carnell, but I also think it's partly on roster construction a little bit. Like we need a 10. Like we'll we'll keep calling for a DP 10. Like truthfully, yes, the back four wasn't great, but even if we're conceding goals, you still have to go be able to create chances and score. And from the games I've seen us play, it's not like we're putting two or three passes in and like Klaus is in the six yard box and he's just hitting it over. Like we're not having those chances. We're expecting John Klaus and credit to Klaus. He ran a shit ton. He he yeah. put in as much effort as you could ask of a number nine in every area, but where we need him to. And that's in the box because he's getting no service. And I think that's a bigger concern moving forward than anything is who's going to be that 10. If it's Lewin step up and be a DP. If it's not Lewin play him as an eight, but we got to find a 10. Um, dude, we uh, why is Indy getting subbed in the 68th minute every game I, too? That's another thing. Yeah, that that's disappointing. And then for you know AZ to continue go 77, uh, Klaus went 77. You know, like and 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 Hebert coming in at right back. I mean, man, like questionable decisions. But I'm tired of being the DP team, bro. I want a DP yeah. player that's gonna make a difference. All these other teams, like Henry said, they've got guys that are bagging. Like, I don't really, I don't care if it's not some old man or it is an old man. Marco Royce, I'm cool with that. But, like, bring in a, a kid somewhere from Argentina or something. Like, there's well, got to be more. You watch Ricky Puig, as much as we kind of hate him, every single time he I've seen it. the guy, like, he balls. He does Every it. single time he balls. Same thing with Arango. Even though we can call him, like, the master of the dark arts should have been sent off. He was the most dangerous player on the field every single time he touched By the long ball. Shot. He yeah. was going to happen. And we don't have anything like that. Yeah, and yeah, it, it is the roster construction. You do have to start pointing fingers at that. Um, 
maybe it's time that we officially like announce our agenda on that week over week. And that's what we just have to start looking at. Um, because you, you got to get noise around it, man. You, you can't keep like letting people off the hook. I mean, you mentioned Klaus ran his dick off the best chance of the game, other than Indy's goal, obviously the best chance of the game is when Klaus that picked up the ball both. inside the own half and ran the full length of the field. Like it's just put that near post. Individual, it's it's just individual efforts that we're relying on. It's insane. You can't, you can't like go deep in the MLS with that. You have to create legitimate chance. I think that that's the thing too. When you start looking at these other teams and you look at just highlights, you only look at highlights and you look at goals, how goals are set up and how like goals are taken and how they're constructed. There's like legitimate passages of play that lead to these goals. Ours are all individual efforts. Like you said, it's, it's a, it ain't cute, boy. It ain't cute. Nope. And we do have FC Dallas, I believe, coming up at the weekend. I'm double checking that. I think that's true. At home again at City Very Park. Um, who's also not great. They're not doing great not right good. now. So, good. good Lord, please, heaven above, let's put some points on the board. Let's have a good home performance. Uh, let the fans leave happy, man. We, we've had that once this, this year. And uh, I would like to feel that personally again. So um, hoping for a stronger comeback. Moving on in the podcast itself, we will slide straight into our Premier League review. Uh, And we've got some interesting ones. Like I said, Spurs only wanted to pull three points. I'm going to say it a couple more times probably. Um, (laughs) But we'll start with Chelsea Burnley. Let's talk Chelsea. Come on, Chelsea. Up the blues. Come on, Chelsea. And quite oh, the voluptuous <laughs> two-two finish uh, for the Blues at home, if I if I do believe. Um, and you know, I've got thoughts. I've, I watched highlights. It was the same game as the Tottenham game. So I'll let Nikki just you know give us your two cents, buddy. So thankful for Chelsea. Chelsea makes my makes my weekend better every week. <laughs> they, they, they do somehow. God, it quite does the literal opposite for me. Um. I will start. Uh, I'll only flower, honestly, that I'll give is Cole Palmer. I think he is so quality, and I feel bad for him because we should win a lot more games because he's on our team, but our defense doesn't know how to uh, win a header um, to save our life. So um, that's what happens. Um, starting lineup, I wasn't, I was actually thrilled seeing Mudrick in the lineup. I also thought he didn't play awful. Um, I didn't think he was great and um, definitely could have uh, attacked more, but I definitely don't think he found the ball as much as I would have liked him to. Um, Our back four every week is always a coin flip. So um, Gusto is the only one who can put in a performance back there. Everyone else is kind of a coin flip on whether they're going to show up or not. I also feel bad for Petrovic because like, I know he had a mistake this game, but I think it's his first one that he's really had. Literally Um, first mistake he's made. And I, I don't think that, like, I'm looking at Fat Bob. He has a 5.5. Like, I don't think he deserved that. Like, I think there was a couple of saves that he made um, that kept us in the game. Um, but besides that, um, similarly to what Henry was saying about how to beat St. Louis, how to beat Chelsea is to play a low block and smash crosses as much as you possibly can because when the ball is up in the air, our defenders literally go blind um, and don't know how to defend. Um, but yeah, um, when the red card happened, I, to be fair, I was not like, we can get into the call in and of itself. I know you guys probably want to talk about that a little bit because I do think it was questionable, but, um, with them going down a man, it just immediately put them into a low block. And if you know anything about playing Chelsea, um, you don't play a high line when you go down 10 men, you just, uh, play a low block and, and defend and cross the shit out of the ball. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, but the penalty in and of itself, I was one of those fans that was sitting there with my uh, mouth shut and smiling because we finally got a VAR call going our way. Um, I Such think a shit call. I, ah, one a of those call. ones I'm happy it was called for me, but I don't think if it was called against me, I would be too happy either. Um, I, do, I do think there's contact as a defender i absolutely fucking hate that call because i've done that so many times of just bodying the guy off the ball 
Um, he kind of just poked it out into the middle of no man's land and was going to run around him. I do think he could have ran around him, but I also think as a defender, that's just an easy body and clearance. Um, so the call, I was definitely shocked with. Um, but yeah, pumped to hear your guys' thoughts. For him to get another yellow on that too, dude, I like, know. and then get sent off. That's that insane. That's wildly rash. Like, yeah, and that... I completely understand um, companies uh, blow up. <laughs> Yeah, and then he gets red. He's out the yeah. next game too. <laughs> it's insane. Bro, that that was the call that uh, made me text him. Was like, if we think the MLS refs are bad, like they're all just bad because yeah, that, they're all that, bad. I mean, obviously, they were going to sit in regardless, but the red just kind of emphasized that. Yep. But the fact that it was a pen and you know, you know, I think it just it changes the whole outcome of the game when it's not even a call. Like if he goes yeah. to the monitor, there's no way. Like I don't okay, know. but can and we review it? After that, mm-hmm. the absolute stones on my man Cole Palmer to chip the goalie. I mean, yeah. penalty penalty spot pulling, oh. man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I do he still scores goals. Penalty my spot goalie. pulling, man. Yo, you brought him up earlier. I've actually enjoyed watching Mudrick play this season. Um, he hasn't had the end production. He scored a couple goals, sure. Kid is so fast. That's and so rapid. Incredibly I, fast. Like, not to be this guy. But if he was at any other London-based club, if he was at Arsenal, or if he was at Spurs, dude, where like both of those teams attack from their wings as their main point of attack, he would be electric. Like the guy figured out how to run now. Like last year, it looked like he was a deer in the headlights at every <laughs> single turn. Out. <laughs> dude, now he gets the ball, and that kid just takes off. And I, I think if he was at any other club in London, he would be. He'd be great, but unfortunately, he's just at Chelsea, and you know he just dribbles into his own guys because you all like force straight through the middle, and he doesn't have anywhere to go. Well, yeah, when they play a low block and he's on the pitch and wants to attack, it's hard to for him to be able to do that. And to be to your point, he's getting the ball in the corner when there's three guys now on top of him because two two of our guys have brought them defenders with him, and uh-huh. then he's expected to get to full speed. Like that's just not how we need to have him on the counter and in space and running because I do think he's a very talented, unlike I think Nico Jackson, we haven't even touched on him. I just, I can't even, <laughs> I absolutely I mean, hate watching him play. Um, but Mudrick, I, I do think there's a future and like, I think he's going to be a huge asset for us in the future. And he's young. He's super young. He's still so super. young and he's so doing young. it for Ukraine. Yeah. Like he shows up to Ukraine and scores big goals and, and big yep. matches, but I, again, th- it kind of comes back to Chelsea and Pochettino in the fact that none of those guys are really set up for success. Like Nick says it every week. Like you're you're not getting the bet the most out of each of those players individually. And you know, I didn't realize that Pochettino was actually still on Spurs' payroll, but it turns out um, uh, Daniel Levy's paying two managers right now the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> what a club, baby. <laughs> It's gonna be Nikki. It's gonna be a shit show Thursday. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It'll be a calamity of errors for the two of us. Yep. The two teams. The part is, this was our like we had a game in hand, and like this is a would have been a huge win for us. And what what I, I don't have the table up. What position are you guys in? That's no banter. Oh, it's serious. Oh, I, I to be fair, I haven't looked since fucking our game. I was and what's crazy is I it, went there and was like fuck. It's an absolute must win for United <laughs> to play eleventh place Chelsea. It is a must win. So hey, yeah, I will. Uh, I will stand on this hill. I said it last year and at the beginning of the year. Tw- anything better than twelfth? It's improvement. It's all yeah, you have sure. for, man. Sure. Chelsea thing. play up too. Chelsea play well against good teams though too. So yeah, it should be interesting. I, I've said that multiple yeah. times. We play at the yeah. level of our opposition every cool. single. Day. I wanna. I wanna. If I may, I want to read a text um, uh, sent from Connor Sandobri at, at noon on Saturday. This was right after the Chelsea game. The text says, in quotes, that's a bad performance today from Chelsea. As a result, I think Ten Hag should be sacked. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I don't know how Pochito has a job, man. It's nuts. I'm, uh, I'm with Nick. Where do, why? What's the point in getting rid of the yeah, guy? No, no. It's we're, just we're very young. Like I, I just, I just yeah. think, it, it, and we don't have to get into. It. I just think it shows that they, that where the English media choose to focus on, where they know what's going to get clicks. Because if United was in eleventh, could you imagine? For real though, could you imagine? That's true. It would be 
chaos. What, look at Chelsea Twitter. If you guys have some time, fucking go down that rabbit hole. But that's the thing. We'd have to go to Chelsea Twitter. Like Man. with United, you just have to go to any publication about anything. I haven't heard anything about any of the United shit. Man was golfing for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> check well, check Twitter every once in a while. You guys every week. Men skip and care about cup finals to golf. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> That's not true. And so sliding on, disappointing for Chelsea, but they are back again on Thursday against United. Um, <laughs> Spurs took on Luton this week, and I was begging for something simple. Right. Let's just <laughs> let's just go out, score three goals in the first half and move on with our lives. Just give it to us and move on. Uh, no, in classic fashion, Spurs went down 1-0 in the second minute and took a 1-0 deficit into half against a team in a relegation zone. Like I said earlier, it the definition of insanity is doing it over and over and expecting the same results. Um but things change, right? You know, Spurs and no one's backing down. That's how this goes. Uh, if we ignore the opponent, this is a great, this is a great finish. That's awesome. Um, you know, it's never easy. There were a lot of poor individual performances. Guys that I've talked about, you know, for a few weeks now. Basuma, kind of tired of it. Um, Bentaker's apparently been playing with a broken toe for three weeks, which is why he probably hasn't been starting much. So. I'd like to see that switch. Uh, Basuma got absolutely toasted by Andros Townsend, who made zero friends on his trip back to uh, North London. Um, but it was, you know, it was the sunny show. That's just what happens. Uh, Brendan Johnson comes in for for Kulusevsky, who had another really poor performance. I, you know, I'm I'm kind of tired of defending him. Um, and I we've seen what he can do. He just doesn't do it all that often. Um, D- disappointing, but we're again this Brendan Johnson guy. I, I not a finished product by any means. He is not a world beater, um, but he's getting better, I think, and it's very evident in his contributions to the team. He's he's really uh, solidifying a spot on the field every week, and I think he didn't even start because he went seventy five minutes with Wales or uh, yeah with Wales previously this week. So like, you know, not upset at him not starting. But you could see the, the difference in quality and just what he was able to bring to the table. Kulusevsky's in a dribble and cut inside. Brennan Johnson will be like, I'll do a one-two and just get to the corner, see if I can't find a ball across the middle. And it works. Shocker. That's kind of how this whole Ange thing works. Um, so he was great. Timo Werner, man, if he could just finish a damn ball, we'd be talking about a completely <laughs> different guy. We'd be yeah, talking about – We'd legend, be talking yeah, about an absolute, absolute legend. stud in the league. Brother, um, <laughs> uh, oh, brother. Um, he's, uh, it's, he, make, he, he puts the, the fans in a pickle and Potch, or, or Potch, Jesus Christ, Potch, oh. the Coglu. <laughs> they both start with POS. We'll be all right. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Werner. Uh, he's putting everyone in a tough position. Potch on the brain. Potch on the brain. He's, he's put, I'm, glad, I'm so glad I'm where I'm at personally. But, uh, uh, you know, sometimes your ex just pops into your head. It is what it yep. is. But, hey, hey. I kid. I kid, I kid, I kid. Um, <laughs> he puts everyone in a tough position. His release clause is what, 16 mil? And he's doing a lot of good things, doing a lot of things right. I think if you find a, contra- a contributing, you know, winger in the Premier League for 16 mil, you take that every day of the week. That's an absolute steal. But like, he forced that own goal. He forced, he forced that own goal. Pressure. He, Real I mean, pressure. he's there all the time. Um, he, he's at the back post, whether or not they go in the net. I mean, God, he uh, he was, you know, he was the hockey assist set up the the second goal for Sonny. But like you know, I don't. I don't, I'm completely torn on whether or not you make this buy option. Frankly, I'm from the position of what do you have to lose? Fuck it, just just keep the guy who really cares and if he plays in a squad. One hundred percent, you take it. And if he plays million, in a squad bro, yes. rotation role, yes. cool. Yeah, that's totally worth it. We've spent more 100%. on every other winger at the club, and there and some aren't even performing as well. So um, I like to see him stay. Um, 
it's just so didn't hit or miss. My bingo card. I didn't have that on my bingo card either. <laughs> I was hoping for you know some contribution as a as a sub on winger, but here we are. He's starting and playing ninety minutes. <laughs> um, but I'm not mad at it. You leave with three points. Three points is three points is three points is three points. Um, it you know there were some United guys talking like man if if uh, if Spurs lose this one and United win we're we're within this we're only a couple points away and our our schedule at the end is so easy we can just cake it, it's way easier than everybody else's we have a better shot than Villa or Spurs to get top four I'm like okay first wait that was it twenty minutes in and B you got to win your own games if you're gonna start climbing the table lads. so um, let's, not, let's not pretend like Spurs isn't gonna Spurs here a little bit too. Like, just, well just, we have the hardest schedule We're, yeah you do you do they play, you play Liverpool all yep all yep. of them bro we're not Spurs aren't gonna win those games like Chelsea Liverpool and and uh, Arsenal still left. Okay, one of those teams is in 11th, so we probably shouldn't be throwing them into the same conversation. <laughs> yeah, Nick's just happy to be here. <laughs> like, the clown meme of, like, the guys about to raid yes. the building and just yeah. the clown holding the gun. Yeah. Ooh, did you see Ange's, uh, I think it was his comment today, where he was asked if United could catch him? And he was like, well, man, if you look at it, uh, yeah. we're eight points behind City. Do you think we're going to catch City? And the, the reporter just kind of sat there and was like, uh, I don't really know. Good response. Good response. His, his ability to just absolutely throw a curveball back at the reporters is, is elite. He's so good at it. Um, and, I, I, you know, I love the guy. It's like, we're, you know, you know what you're going to get at least. Where it, it, Sometimes it doesn't work, but you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to be the product. Uh, you're so every time is so spot yes. on. Yeah. It's it's literally perfect every it, time. It's literally Spurs logo first bracket. Oh boy, am I so excited <laughs> to watch my favorite team play and then second bracket under the game. It's like I'm going to kill myself and the very end it's like, "Oh nice, we won." Cool. Um <laughs> yeah. it it just it seriously couldn't be more accurate. Um and god, bro, cardiac spurs. It's all I've ever really dealt with my entire life. I've we don't comfortably win games. That's not Spurs' prerogative. So, um, again, that's why this one, these three points are so huge because your your final schedule is miserable. Uh, you're not going to win all those games. Hopefully, you win one, maybe two. Uh, you know, if you get if you get six points out of out of twelve with with those four, you know, matchups, I think you're going to be pretty happy. But um, yeah, you know, Sonny. He just does it all the time. Like Hen Class. said, Hen texted Class. me and um, was like, dude, when he picks up the ball and it's just the, the, the objective is to drive, he does it better than about anyone. His close control awesome. is insane. Like the like Spurs would just post photos of like quick time lapses of just, you know, a short burst from him and he's a blur. Like it is and the ability to literally keep the ball like on a string while just flying down the field. His decision to not play Werner in the first time, cut in, beat a guy, then play him, took the guy completely out of the play. He was the one that didn't recover into the box, and Sonny Tuck's one. So um, love him. Spurs legend. There's not many of them. Hang it in the rafters. Give him a give him a fucking statue outside. He uh, will fifth, have a statue, for sure. He, yeah, yeah, fifth highest sure. goal yeah, scorer. Yeah. Fifth highest goal scorer in the league. Like that's that's nothing to shake a stick at. Um, as a winger too, he's not he's not your Harry Kane everyday striker. So um, I'm obsessed with him. How can you not be? He's the best. Three points. Don't, can we can we say that that first own goal was one of the worst I've ever seen? Like I watched oh. it a few times and I was like, what is he trying to do here? Was he bad. like he literally just taps it in the goal. Like I Missile. was like. Benefit do you, of the doubt, he's trying to put it sideways, maybe, but he just taps it in. He's you see Seamus Coleman's own goal this this weekend, oh, Everton's own goal, the, the chest bad. in the goal. I'm like, yeah. brother, that's bad. Yeah, dude, he, bad. he rifled it in. Um, yeah. And, like, a Werner's on his Good back. Finish. Werner's going to score. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Werner's going to yeah, score yeah. if he's not there. Yeah. He has to be there. And then he had one exactly the same in the second half and made a great clearance. Like, yeah. it, like just do it, see yeah. that the first time, bro. What are like... <laughs> You know, Luton are going to Luton. Um, yeah, yeah. But you take you take the points and you run with your tail tucked between your legs. So uh, <laughs> not the first time. Won't be the last. Up next was United Brentford 
at three o'clock on Saturday. I was definitely out enjoying the day and did not get to see the game, but Wish uh, I, was. I, ch- I, I can't lie about, I chuckled at the texts I Chuckle. was receiving in the final two minutes. Um, but I'll let the United corner take it over. Go ahead, boys. Fucking stop calling them that. They're going to keep running with it. They can have it. They can have it. It is what it is. Are you pointing to me? Yeah, you go for it. Oh, oh. man. Um, I, I guess I guess coming into this game with, with two weeks off, t- truthfully, I think you know, what makes it so bad is I, I was so excited for this game because I actually thought that we were going to have like close to what I think is our eleven. And then when the starting lineup came up, like I was expecting to hopefully see Leecha back in the 11. I was hopefully, hopefully like Cassie, who who came up with a knock um, right before international break. I was hoping he was going to be back in the 11. Um, and then obviously Mount's healthy. I get why Ten Hag is sort of doing what he's doing. Like Leach has come back from two major injuries. You, you can't necessarily risk him, especially with Liverpool and Chelsea back to back. So he chose to go with Lindelof um, and McTominay in the midfield. And I think this is what we've kind of seen. And I've been saying it consistently forever about McTominay. Like there's United fans that are, have legitimately been like, we have to keep this guy at the club. And to me, this is the perfect example of why you don't. Because I I think Kobe Manu has the ability to play as that six and he can, he can play there. But without a Casemiro, the reason McTominay plays is because he brings that physical presence to the midfield. What he also just lacks is the ability to do anything else. Um, (laughs) He, 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 does not help in combination. He he does not help in combination. Yeah, unless you need an 89th minute winner, then then he's your guy. But he does not help. He does not help in combination play. Defensively, he's oftentimes he, he uh, lacks the ability to know where he's supposed to be. I actually thought Bruno played decent. And I thought Kobe played decent, but there was no direct connection between our back four and and our front three, and that has consistently been our problem this entire year. So whether you want to put that on Ten Hag, whether you want to put that what it is, like to me, if it's if it's me in this game and I was the manager, like I highly consider either like starting Mount or playing Bruno as the eight and putting like letting Scotty play as the ten, yeah. Because truthfully, when it comes to building out of the back and playing playing out of possession, that's where we were terrible this weekend. Like once we got to the front three, you gave the ball to Rashford to Bruno. Like we actually created a little bit. But at the same time, the lackluster of the inability to build out of the back even at all is what consistently keeps hurting this team. It's when you have Leecha, yes, he's great at building out of the back. He's great at he's great out of possession. But to me, it's still once you enter that second phase of possession and trying to, to build from the back to the front three, that's where Hoyland does his graveyard shift. It's where Garnacho is picking up the ball, but he's picking up the ball at the halfway line. That's where Rashford's picking up the ball 10 yards inside his half. And that's not where these players are dangerous. And yes, you can save credit. Like I'm extremely happy that Mason Mountain scored. And yes, he came on for about 10 minutes and the game instantly changed to where we actually looked like we we're going to create something. And he did step up and score. But at the same time, it's the same thing we've been saying about this team for, I almost think it's five to six years. We have these games of moments to where like you beat Liverpool and you feel like it's that moment where, all right, guys are getting healthy. Let's build off it. We can build on something. And then this just tends to keep happening. It's like the moment that we start to get built up and excited about a United game, we drop a stinker like this. Like, like truthfully, we drop a stinker like this. And I get it. A little bit of it is sort of Ten Hag having to rest players and making sure that the, our key guys come back healthy. But at the same time, like, we have nothing to play for that's in the Premier League. Like, truthfully, like, Brentford was the biggest game of our season up until the next game. And we had to win that. I don't care if you're at home. I don't care if you're away. But like who've said, like who's 100% right? Like if we beat Brentford, like we're still in this race because I truthfully think Spurs are going to drop points. Villa play City on Wednesday. Like there's the opportunity there. But when you go and you drop a stinker in a game that you have to win, and not only that, there's certain players on this team that have been with this club for I don't even know how long, five, six, seven years, that seem to not give a shit. And for me, it's like you have Champions League football on the line. There's rumors that if Ten Hag doesn't make Champions League, his job's gone. Nobody besides some of the newbies seems like they're fighting for that. Like Delo is one of those. To me, he's probably our player of the season. Onana has been fantastic, like fantastic over the last six months. Leading the league in, uh, I think he's second in the league in save percentage, first in the league at goals prevented. Like, so Onana's been fantastic. Hoyland, you can never question his work ethic and the fact he's going to work his ass off. Same thing with Bruno. But the rest of them? Like, you're not offering anything. Like, you're offering zero. And Wambasaka is the same way. He's great defensively, but then he has these lapses to where he just shuts off. And if you yeah. look at Brentford's goal, 
we have given up, and I think there's an actual stat, seven goals this year from cutbacks. Seven. Like, there was literally, if you go back and look at the goal, there's five United players that are standing on the six-yard box, and not a single one is marking the wide-open center back at the PK spot. And it's like, oh, he slots it in, 1-1. Like, I can't even tell you. I, I think it's six or seven times that we've gone up a goal or scored and conceded within five minutes. Like, that, that to me is between the ears. Like, that has nothing to do with coaches. That has nothing to do with tactics. That has everything to do with staying switched on, especially when you score in the 90th minute. To just, I don't even care if you're humping the ball down the field. Do what you got to do to get the win. But these guys, they switch off mentally so, so much to where I don't care who's on the field. You play for Manchester United, that's the bare minimum, is that you act like you care for 90 minutes. And when you score a goal, it's like, yes, fantastic. We scored a goal. You got to see the game out. Like all of these teams, like Brentford is, is a good team. They're not where they probably should be at the table, but they're a good team. They're going to bring it. Um, obviously, credit to Brentford. They probably deserve to, to win like two or three to one if you even want to give us that goal. Um, and I can't say enough about Ivan Tony, man. Like if, if, you, if you watched United or that game, Ivan Tony's a baller, man. Yeah. Like the, the touch around Licha and the box and the cross. But not only that, not even the, the main moment, him and um, – What's the other guy's name? Wissa or we, I don't know how you yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like they, yeah. They just worked their nuts off. Um, so all credit to Brentford, but at same thing from United perspective, it's the same old, same old. Uh, one step forward, two steps back. It's just how it's just how we have been. It's gonna, it's gonna. I mean, I don't have much to add on. Other, you know, it's just gonna come down to we're in scary hours for us. Um, you know, the the next couple of games, we're, we're we've officially played ourselves out of our own having control of our own destiny. We are relying 100% on, on Villa and Spurs to drop points and us playing really well um, in order for us to get, you know, top four, top five. We have to rely on them doing that. That's never a great place uh, to be um, when you're trying to do that. My, my only shred of hope that uh, I have right now is that Ineos is continuing to work in the background of getting guys signed in all of the spots behind the scenes. Um, there was another announcement today that we're getting the technical director from Southampton, um, previously at Man City as well. He's the academy director at City. Yeah. So guy knows what he's doing when it comes to developing players, a really great guy. And you hope that when you're putting all these guys together behind the scenes that you're going to see sure. a product, uh, an end product on the field. And at this point, you know, Ragnar, I don't know how many times Dobes and I have talked about of this like open heart surgery needed. Uh, it seems like we're doing that from the behind the scenes effort, but now we got to start looking at the on field, the on field performances. And this summer is going to be interesting as fuck. How many deals can we do to get guys out? Because that's really going to be our main cash funding this summer. If we can get rid of guys, there's, there's low hanging fruit that are still on our books that we can just right away, just dish out. And by the way, Hoover, just to like, just for a perspective, you talked about Timo Werner for 16 million. Like we have guys on our book. Like let's, let, let's take like, Hannibal. Hannibal's on loan right now at, at, at or wherever he is, Sevilla, I think. He's not playing at all because he's not up to the levels. A buyback clause for us, if we want to like buy him back or whatever it is, is like 15 million. That's yeah. like, would we take a Hannibal with nothing to prove over Timo Werner, just like for sake of that argument. But I, I think if we can get rid of some of these low hanging fruit guys, and then if we can just get a little bit cutthroat when it comes to even some of those guys that started in the 11 this weekend, we just got to do it. Um, got to sell McTominay. Truthfully, McTominay's stock will never be higher. No, like, never. It, it will never be higher than, than what it is right now. If we don't cash in on him, like this this is the time. Like if we want to get 35, close to 40 million from him, West Ham will pay that. Like, yep. He's he, going to he fall has, Everton next year. But bro, <laughs> he might. He, he might. Has, to me, McTominay has a place in this league. He doesn't have a place in this league for a team that wants to achieve big things. That's yes. the difference in level for me. Yeah, and, and I agree with that 100%. And, you know, this is the time. Uh, similarly, like, Maguire's had a great front half of the season. If he can finish the rest of this season with the form that he showed in the first half, same thing with him. Like, he's 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 never going to get back to $80 million, but, like, we're going to get to that $30, $40 million range, and, and that's what we need. And... Yeah, we, we just need a lot. That's to, De that's to Debo right there. It is, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and I think that that's – I 
it, it honestly feels like a little bit like a punch in the face when you just said like, that's what we've been saying for the last five or six years. And then you're like, holy shit, how many conversations have we had exactly like this for the last six years, bro? That is outrageous. So um, yeah, I, I mentioned this before we started recording, but I feel super like disheartened uh, this week, um, you know, after obviously the, the United tie, which felt way more like a loss than a tie and then the city tie or the city loss that felt way more like dismantling <laughs> than a loss um so like yeah i just i don't see a lot of redeeming things um yeah that's Wait, pretty much waiting all around until three o'clock to see your team just put in Un- a fucking uh, stinker uh, yes yes horrible and then it six sucks. hours later to see your other team put in a stinker is horrible <laughs> it sucks bro <laughs> tough saturday yeah Worst I have, uh, it was good. To, it was good to see Mount score shoot. and play again. So, that, so that's one positive. Yeah. I mean, like, I think he, I he think did look good well when he came known. on, and then he got the goal, and you're like, "Fuck yeah, that's awesome!" It's the headlines. Like, he scores. That's going to be great for his confidence. And a minute later, bro. Yeah. One it's minute. Yeah. Point straight to the patch. I think we'll know that United <laughs> is willing to move, to, move, to move on when. And you guys know I love him. But eventually, a substitution has to be a Mason Mount for a Bruno Fernandez. Yes, like it, it, has, it has to happen because I it, it, love Bruno. But like, when does his like production and his numbers start getting like? Is, the, I mean, is that ever? Are you ever going to be? He's, like, he's, he's having a he, by by his standards where he broke Lampard's record of scoring the most goals and assists in a single season. He's not at that level, but his statistics like I think he's got more goals and assists in Odegaard this year. Like his stats aren't horrible, but it's because our overall play like is not. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm almost positive he has more goals and assists than Odegaard this year. I'm like 99 percent positive. I think Odegaard has 15 combined. <laughs> I, I have to check me on that. But it's it, even even regardless, our expectations for Bruno are just so high that we're expecting that out of him. What we need to see more from Bruno is just the ability to slow the game down and keep the ball which he, he doesn't – right now he doesn't do because it's just the way that we're used to playing. We're used to playing strictly on the counter. And if we want to be able to play against the Man City, play against an Arsenal, play against the Liverpool, there's times in those games you need the ball. Like, make Arsenal work. Make that's like, work. that's what I can't figure out, dude. Like, I mean, I know that we're all armchair es- experts over here and we're, like, watching this and we're like, oh, I would do th- so much different if I was in charge. But, I mean, like, legitimately. Like, th- the amount of times that we literally just, like, you know, pick our head up and then just spray the ball into the ends of the earth. It makes no sense. And it's like, especially against the Brentford, where like you are the better team, just act like it for two seconds. Just literally have the confidence. And like, you know, I we can even end with this and transition into and transition into the big game. But you, you think about like Odegaard. I don't think Odegaard did anything like outrageously impactful in the game against city but every single chance that guy had man he he wanted the ball he took care of the ball he was going after it like he he never let a his press yeah you he yeah. never let a bad pass or a blocked pass or something not working out the way he wanted to take him out of the game and you just see that so often with united where we try to play this home run pass and and then after that, it doesn't work, and and we just drop our heads. Like you just got to take care of the ball for literally, literally any amount of time. We've uh, we've got live tornado sirens, so don't yep. you ever doubt. <laughs> don't you ever doubt that we didn't, you know, put our lives at risk here, here for, for this you. podcast. We're we are here, here for, for you, <laughs> the listeners. Um, it does make a good transition into what was supposed to be. The marquee matchup of the weekend, and of the year. honestly, of maybe the year, the week, the the game of the of the season, and what we got, lads, was haram. We we, uh, ew, yeah, brother, ew, brother, ew. Uh, what is that, brother? What is? <laughs> uh, we had a zero zero draw, Arsenal and Manchester City with eight center backs and four defensive mids on the field. Whether or not you want to argue uh, of, of tactics and just an absolute tactical masterclass, it was defensive from both teams from the jump. Yep. Um, neither team looked like they were, A, willing to lose points, or B, chase it hard enough to get points. Um, and, and we did obviously bring in 
Nate Griffin to, you know, give his two cents as the Arsenal resident fan, expert, the resident expert. Uh, and, and I know there's a lot of positive things that you can pull from it from an Arsenal perspective. So I'll let you hit that. But man, we all wanted so much more out of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, same, you know, and I, before the game started, I was thinking back to the two times we played them this year and they were both pretty much like that. And I was like, maybe you'll see different tactics from Pep, from Arteta to see maybe that opens up and then a, an early goal might open the game up and you'll see more. But as the game kind of went further and further in, it looked like it was going to be maybe a one nothing. Like the, like you said, there was I think there was three shots on goal the whole game. And I think one of them came in the last minute. So and you see the starting lineups, you see eight center backs. You're thinking to yourself, this is going to be kind of a haram ball like we said yeah. man. I, I mean it is what it is it i think i think the interesting thing we saw was arteta came out after the game and he said we weren't intending to sit that far back so i think we got a lot of trouble twitter whatever it is about how far we sat back and i don't think we initially came to park the bus but i think we had a lot of man marking going on and i think the way that they played and they pressed up high and they were they had the ball moving so quickly that we just ended up getting sit in the back yeah. and i think that I think, honestly, I think the message was survive the first 15, 20, get a little more foothold in the game, and then try to go from there. But I just think that, I mean, I remember at halftime, I think they had 75% possession, but they, they didn't really look like um, too much. I mean, their best chance was a corner. So, I like like who said, I, I can pull some positives from it. I mean, the last eight times we've gone there, we've gotten thrashed, including last year when we had 70% possession at the game and lost 3-1. to one. They've scored 57 straight games, home games. Incredible record. Was they didn't lot. score today. So, like, yeah. that, there, there's depth. And, like, and I will say, too, like, think about Arsenal two years ago. Think about Arsenal even last year. We're going to City. Are you betting money on us getting a shutout? Because I'm not. And I, I've been a fan forever, man. So, I, I, I think, I, obviously, if you're a neutral, you're like, this was horrible. I hated it. As, as an Arsenal fan, though, I take a lot of positives because I just – I really think – you're seeing a young team kind of mature because even though it wasn't as exciting and all the goals and all the attacking, you saw two really, really good teams going at it hundred percent. There was, there was no question that there was no lack of commitment. There was no, it wasn't like two teams were just kind of lackadaisically kicking around. I mean, it was people running, like you saw at the end of the game, people were on their, on their backs. Like that was, just, they were running, especially like we talked about Odegaard. I mean, I, it was good to see Thomas party come on. I thought Declan Rice, I thought our two center backs played incredible. Not to mention Holland was nowhere to be seen for the second time we've played him this year. Gabrielle He's bodies him something. the entire game. And, and a lot of that is, too, because of how we played. I mean, there was a point I saw a picture. It was four deep, six in front, and then Havertz. I mean, it was it was a definition of, of park it and see what we can do. But, I mean, I'm interested. I, I think, you know what, Hoove? I was thinking about this when we were talking about Tottenham. We're going to have to have you guys do us a favor. I think that's what it's going to come down to. I think we're going to have to have a London to London connection here. Uh, you're the only <laughs> team out of that group that I want to beat, brother. So I truthfully, I know, you know, I, know it. Uh, we, I, I don't know feel it. the same, but I, I, they are going to be, they are going to be the team that ends up having a lot of impact on that. No way around it. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, you know, you look at the schedule with the rest of the games. I, I think Liverpool has the easiest path, especially with Europa League. So you, you know, I, but I'm not, I know Liverpool's class. I don't, I don't think they're going to go through the rest of this Premier League without dropping points, nor do I think City might either, to be honest. So I think it's still wide open. I don't think, I don't think this was deciding the title by any means of nine games to go. Each team plays at least one or two of the top six still. I, I think, we learned a little bit about each team. I think it's a better result for Arsenal. I will say that. Definitely. City at home. You guys you know, have to lose. Yeah. 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 So, I, you know, like I said, sorry for you neutral fans. We wanted a 4-3. We wanted a 5-4. but Yeah, we wanted a thriller, bro. Yeah, I, I know. Think, I think my, my only – and I, I completely understand why Arteta did what he did. Like, it's yeah. – it, when you look at two teams that, ha that have that much possession, like – it's bound to happen, and the commitment I think from that from Arsenal to do it is why they got a point. I do think that, I mean, if Trissard squares that, like that's oh, a smash. That's, that's a the smash, one. That's a smash. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. My, my my bigger gripe, and I'm not speaking to about Griff specifically, but my bigger gripe is with Arsenal fans. 
that could not stop bitching about the way that Porto played for two legs. They're like, oh, play real football. Try to no. do something. Please try no. to do something. And they yeah. could really take it. Really no. Stop. no. I, Arteta called up his buddy and was like, hey, dude, uh, what was your game plan for beating us? Because I'm going to do that exactly to try to get <laughs> No, 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 no. No, no, hold on, hold on. Let me respond because if you did, did if you watch the Porto game, you saw them sit back in the mid block, sure. But then you saw them actually try to go laying on the ground. Lay, everything's a foul. Everything's a painful. Everything, the ball's out. We didn't do that. Like, you can't sit there and say we tried to time waste the entire game. I we, watched, that, we I, went I watched for the Saka game. Take a, about a minute and a half a, to win ball. A 60 minute a yellow practice. card. A 60 minute a yellow practice. card for David Raya is time wasting in its yes, essence. Yes. In but it's that, that's we just got done talking about the prem referees and how stupid they are. He he decided he wanted to go long and he pushed him up. He wasn't like getting his water bottle behind the goal, walking a few laps. Like it, so the portal continue. game was so different. Can we talk about not the, the style they set up, but in the time wasting for sure? Can we talk about yeah, who the from Manchester? The important name of the fucking from Manchester is Anthony Taylor. Yeah. I will say I think the thing what? that as a, and this is obviously speaking from a neutral. Like, I think if you were to beat this City team, like, I think this is a missed chance from Arsenal only because I think that That's fair. I, I, truthfully over the, the span of the full season, I think Arsenal has been probably the most consistently played outside of Liverpool, I guess, one and one A, one B team in the prem. And I think that this was a chance for Arsenal to go take the, the league in That's their own stable. hands and say, let's beat them. And I think they could have. Um, but we also have to speak about Holland. Like, I don't know if you guys saw Roy Keane. We got to talk Keane, about it, all him. Say that outside of finishing, he's a, he's about the level of a League Two player. And like I've been saying this for years, when people were sitting there saying he can score goals, but like truthfully, yes, Saliba and Gabriel are two tough center backs to go at, one hundred percent, probably the best center back doing the league right now. But Holland provided zero. No one can see what that is, but Holland provided. <laughs> but, but come on, Holland did, <laughs> negative. Holland did nothing. I'll also play devil's advocate, though. Know, it's hard for him when it's a low block and it's yeah, a yeah, yeah. That's very area and, you're, and City's only way to get him involved is crossing the ball. To him. I, I, I agree never, with bro. you, though. He still could provide a lot more, and he still wasn't even that impactful, and he's in Gabriel's pocket. But, but when you look at best, when you look right at best players in the world, you look at best players in the world, you think Mbappe is going to be stopped by a low block? I think, I think yes. No, no, maybe. No. Yes, no. I don't know. I don't watch him much. Not, not, not as much. Not as much. Not as much. Not as much. But also, if Mbappe receives the ball, he has the ability to turn, pull a step yeah. over, beat somebody. Holland yeah. turns. <laughs> <laughs> not, not this, it's, a, it's a different speed level, not man. Holland, level. What, yeah. Wasn't yeah, it yeah, like yeah. almost a year ago now that we had this like long, lengthy debate about yes. like who would you prefer, yeah. Holland or Kane? And then like – No was... one was saying it. And then you got Roy Keane calling him a League Two player. Roy <laughs> Keane <laughs> knows a lot. Hey, and, and, yes, and just – Captain just... of public history. Just to bring up what you said earlier, too, Arsenal have ne- not lost to City or Liverpool in both games this year. That, we've won that's one a we've huge, tied one. huge adjustment that's a huge for them. Stat like, that's a really what it used stat. to be. And City don't have a win against the top five. Really? Think about that. Don't have a win the against the top five. The only team they've beaten this season. six is us twice. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I mean, we keep yeah. playing our cards, right? We might fall out yeah. of that big, big conversation. We might fall out of seven. Dude, <laughs> when I tell you – Go ahead. Go ahead, the uh, the Twitter was on fire this weekend. Twitter yep. was an absolute. Yep. I have I was sending you guys tweet after tweet <laughs> after tweet yesterday, just at how funny everything was. And one of them was a video. Uh, if TikTok guy was in the pub, he's like, "Look, man, you know, I just don't think Havertz is doing it for me." And then it didn't nothing. The other guy was like, "Well, you know, honestly, uh, I, I think he's being under underused in the in the wing ding role <laughs> and in the the double pivot six where he could be more of like a flizzy pop." in the, you know, the Asperio type role. We need to switch over to a, that, that is the definition Arsenal fan after that game. Like it was an absolute tactical masterclass, the way that Arteta set his team up. And then, you know, the, the, the one with Roy Keane, who was, is that, yeah, he's, I mean, I'm not going to take that guy's word for everything because he's, he's a clown sometimes too. Like there was one where it was the quotes, it was him sitting in the, in the analyst chair and it was like, Jesus took two days to come back. He's like, in this in this climate, he's like, I would have taken thirty minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it, you know, that guy is hard on everybody all the time too. But um, 
Yeah, Doves, what were you hitting? I, I was I was just gonna say it just to me, and you can take this for what you want, and this is no banter, it just shows that there's levels between the teams still. Because what I mean by that is Real Madrid's gonna play Man City in a couple weeks. They're not gonna sit in a low block for 80 minutes. If they play Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich's not gonna sit in the low block for 80 minutes. And like you can say that whatever you want. I personally think Arteta showed them way more respect than I think than he should have because I, I truthfully think that Arsenal's a team that when they had possession, that they can create stuff and make stuff happen. Yes, you can say it was what one shot on goal to zero or two shots on goal to one or whatever it was. Like I think Arsenal in this game with that city lineup could have taken the game to them. Maybe that's from a neutral perspective wanting to see more, but I also think this is a missed chance by Arsenal because I truthfully think if they would have tried to play, I think they could have beat this city team. City are beatable. Uh, Absolutely. They are. We, we, yeah, I think it's the context of the game. I think that might be the reason why we played a little bit more defensive with nine games left at City. I think that's that's the reason. Like we're playing a friendly and we're going at each other. That's a different game. But I just think the context of the game in the season with the points total, I think that might have been maybe why it was. I and there's again, I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm not in the locker room, but I'm with you. I, I would like to see us a little more aggressive approach, but it's hard to be angry with the result and how we played after this horrible years we've had playing there. So, if you, if you ask any of us, probably before the start of the season, it's like, hey, you're going to go to City and it's going to be zero zero. I think all yeah. of us, yeah, where do we sign? Down, yeah. take it, and of course, yeah. yep, yep. So that wraps up the Premier League recap. We'll we'll quickly look at the games. We've got a we've got a double week packed ahead. Um, you know the 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 notables are Chelsea United, Spurs, West Ham, Arsenal, Luton. Uh, we'll start with Chelsea United. Um, what what do you expect? Because we've talked about it. Chelsea Chelsea punches above their yeah. weight and. Neither team really has an identity at the moment. So whose identity is going to be worse? I, I do think that I do think that this is a game where we'll see Leicha, we'll see Casemiro back, we'll see Casemiro back in the eleven. Um, but then again, that doesn't really mean that I know what I, to expect. Um, yeah. I, I, truth, I truthfully expect it's, it's like we said. I've seen Chelsea play big teams, and they always play them well. Like when I saw this, even though they're eleventh, it's like I'm circling this game a, a, as a win. Like I, I fully believe that this is going to be as long as we keep Cole Palmer away from twelve yards out, we're we're good. <laughs> I, just, I, I think we can be good. Um, but truth, I, I think this is kind of a coin flip game. It's like which Chelsea team shows up and which United team shows up because at this point, we really don't know about either. Yeah, where is it? Um, yeah, I would where be, is it? I want to know. Do you guys do you guys think Mason Mount starts for you guys? No. It's, In it, this it's game, getting to the, it's getting to the point. Stanford Bridge. He it's scores getting, though. That's what I'm. Yeah, saying. and points to the badge, <laughs> kisses points the badge the in front of all the Chelsea boys. <laughs> it's getting to the point where he. I hope he starts <sighs> asking those questions. My, my biggest thing is Mount needs to play through the middle, and right now what we've seen is he's not willing to necessarily. Kobe Manu, undroppable. Casemiro's going to play. You. And Bruno is probably going to play, which to me is like Mount is not as effective out wide. Yeah, I think he, I think he should. I really want to see like a Mano eight or Mano six Mount as an eight in Bruno, but I just don't think that Ten Hag's going to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see what uh, back four we come with with um, Gusto probably out for this game. Um, I have a feeling our back four is injured. Be, yeah, he got injured towards yeah, the end he, of the. He game. got injured. Oh, oh that man. sucks. Yeah, so our back four is another coin flip. But um, hopefully, I'm hoping that Mudrick gets another start. And just because Sterling had one good flick to Cole Palmer doesn't mean he should get back into our starting line. Nice flick, though. Nice that flick. Was a nice little flick. Nice flick. <laughs> nice flick. Uh, Never know. Him. Never know what you're going to get with that, that lad. Cool. This might be the anti Arsenal City game. This might be the total opposite. Yeah, it's just, just going to be like literally. <laughs> oh. yeah. I'm not a lot over. of defense. Yeah, mm, no. taking the over. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Couldn't it, be me. It is at Sanford Bridge as well. So uh, yes. United's uh, a day away, a day out. Um, yeah. I don't think we've lost to Chelsea in the last four or five times we played them, I don't think. That'd be nice. Wow. Let's continue that. Just I'm don't go down to nine men. I'm That's my positive. suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> you say lost? Yeah, we play at your own half. Play up in the half when you go to nine men. And see what you can do. <laughs> no, we have the last. Time. That's the last I mean. time yeah. we lost was July of 2020 yeah. in the FA Cup, and we tied five times after that. 
Yeah, five in a row. <laughs> right. yeah. So if I'd love to see I'd love to see Harry Maguire up at the half line sprinting back on those runs, bro. <laughs> bro, get him on the field, bro. The, so the tail of the tape is take a draw and the over. I think that would be a nice, tasty little Watch, parlay. It's be zero zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with our Make a play of the week with our streak of betting. <laughs> yeah, well, that's unreal. Great. Yeah. Um, Spurs travel to West Ham this week. Personally. I don't have much to say. We're going to see the same thing that we always get, which is great. Love it. <laughs> There's an identity, unlike some other folks on this this call here. Um, yeah, Spurs City. We're gonna <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're gonna have an identity. This is a game that I would like to see Kulusevski dropped. I'd like to see Brennan Brennan Johnson start. Werner Werner start. I'd like to have Richie up top. Uh, or sorry, uh, Sonny on the left, and then Richie up top. Um, I was about to say, Timo start? Sheeps. <laughs> no, no, I'm okay with Timo start if if that's going to be what it's going to be. But Richie's back healthy, and I think in a West Ham, you know, type game, you want you want the dark arts on your side for this yeah. one. And Richie's going to get into guys' heads. And that's you know, and 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 be a target. You know, I, I think we're going to have to resort to that sometimes. And he's always in the box in the right place. Um, so, you know, hopefully, and, and frankly, if we're talking about him, I'd love to just throw a quick shout on his, his just openness and willing to talk about his mental health struggle. Uh, personally think that's fantastic. Not enough of that in the game and for such a high profile player to really like just get vulnerable and, and open about it. Um, I think we all kind of can, can appreciate that and not something you hear from these guys. Um, and a double down on Mikel Antonio and uh, I don't even remember the other guy, Deeney. Is that is that who's on that podcast? Troy Deeney. Troy? Uh, yeah. Is that, are they podcast together or something? I think so. Where they, they just absolutely drag with Charles through the mud. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is going to be a big one for him if he does play because he's going to want to dunk on, on these guys, I think. So, 100%. Really, it's really a tasty happy game. For him. Yeah, it is a tasty game. It's, a, it's, it's another a must game, win. Yeah. Um, you know, West Ham, it, or you're going to have to deal with Kudus. Uh, he's been an absolute dog. He's so fun to watch. Yeah. He plays, I, I did see, you know, he plays a little bit of hero ball here and there, but on a West Ham side, you're 100% allowed to do that. You don't really, other, you don't have a ton of other guys that, that, you know, have the ability to even, you know, take that chance. So it'll be a big one. Hoping for three points, and then uh, Arsenal. Are you guys traveling to Luton, or is this at the no? Emirates? It's home. Yeah, it's at the oh Emirates. They um last time we played Luton, it was at home, and Declan Rice scored a ninety fifth minute winner. I believe they played it tough, man. It was it was a good game. Luton, I, I expected it to be. Oh, you played Luton there. We played Luton away, and Declan Rice scored. It was like remember that header? Yeah, like ninety fifth minute. I I expect. I mean, you know, on paper we should go. We should go at home. We should win. I think it'll be a tough game. I think. I think they'll do what we just did to City. They'll sit in. They'll make it tough. It'll be physical, but we they have a lot to play for, but we have even more to play for. I mean, it'll be interesting to see who he plays, though. Thomas Party got a cameo last game. He's starting to get fit. We're, we pretty much have everyone fit with the exception of Timber still. When's he well, I know he's pretty close. He's close. He's been in training. There was rumors he might be on the bench for City. I know he's in the, he's in the Champions League squad, so he's been selected. So... He's got to be close. I think they're they're taking their time with it. He came back. It's a big injury, so it'll be interesting to see who we start. Do we play Jorginho the double pivot? Does he go a different way? Does he play party from the start? Well, is Saka fit? We'll we'll see all that. So I we'll see. I love Must win. outside of last weekend and having to play them. I love Luton. Yeah, like fun to they watch. Great, they bro. do yeah. they do everything that you sort of expect out of a relegation team. But they also don't don't completely give it up. Like they yeah. play smart in this mid block, and then they bounce out and and create so well from mm-hmm. uh, target striker to the wings to up. Like they they do it so well. I want them to stay up completely, wholeheartedly. There's so many worse Same. teams than them. Um, so you know they're they're tough to play. Like I, you said the exact same thing that I said last week. Like please God. 3 0 in the first half. Yeah. We yeah. can just, we can all <laughs> score just relax early. a second. Yeah, score early. Yeah, man. And, and they're not going to give that to you. They're not going to roll no. over. Um, but again, like you said, this one on paper should be a blowout. I, I took the I took the Tottenham team total of 2.5 last week. I was livid, livid about that. <laughs> um, 
So so don't count your you know don't count your chickens before they're hatched. No, no. So anything else? I think that uh, wraps the boys up tonight. We have tornado sirens going off in Baldwin. Stay safe out there if you are seeing that as well. Uh, as always, follow us on the socials, TikTok. Uh, we're, we're, you know, hens still going strong. We're, we're too touching. Like it's, you know, like it's 1995. Um, hey, I don't know what that means at all, but I just need to get a number there. <laughs> Did they do that then? <laughs> Did they? I don't know. Did Maybe they care for two touch. Yeah. They <laughs> give <them> two touch. <laughs> big, big year. Um, Twitter as always, you know, we're, we're just, we're, it's, it's the slow decline of, of happiness on the Twitter, but worth following, worth popping in and seeing, you know, the, the anger that sometimes comes out on, on these match days. But uh, as always, from me to the fellas, thanks for joining and uh, catch us next week. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. Next time, next time you hear from us, uh, we'll have beaten Liverpool. Hey! <laughs> hey. hey.